This episode of Distraction is sponsored by Omega Bright CBD. Formulated by Omega Bright Wellness, creators of the number one Omega-3 supplements for the past 20 years. Omega Bright CBD. Safe, third-party tested, and it works. Shop online at omegabrightwellness.com. And by Landmark College, offering comprehensive support for students with ADHD and other learning differences. Learn more at lcdistraction.org. Landmark College, the college of choice for students who learn differently. Hello and welcome to Distraction. I'm your host, Dr. Ned Hallowell. In today's episode, I will be doing one of my favorite things, answering questions and responding to emails from you, our treasured, valued, esteemed and just magnificent listeners. And as we usually do in these episodes, my wonderful producer, the lovely, brilliant, so very faithful and good and true, Sarah Gurton, is joining me today to help out. Okay, Sarah, who are we starting with today? I kind of I kind of sound like a dog. Maybe that's why we get along so well. You you like dogs. I'm loyal. <laughs> you don't look anything like a dog. <laughs> well, thank you. Anyway. <laughs> okay. So today we are starting with an email from a listener named Mary. She writes, "I enjoyed listening to the Mini Distraction slash What's in My Toolbox podcast. That was quite a while ago you did that one. But she says, my son is almost 20 and he was diagnosed with ADHD and dyslexia at age eight. He's a wonderful human being and very loved, but struggles daily and spends much of his time shut away in his room. He has friends and enjoys his time with them, but shuts himself away when at home. Throughout his life, he has shunned any form of help, despite huge encouragement. He won't accept our help or help from external sources, i.e. rejected help at school, left college as lecturers couldn't help him, won't let us teach him practical things, gave up on driving lessons, the list goes on. How can we overcome this barrier? If it was in his toolbox, he'd fly. So, Mary, uh, your son, this is not uncommon, uh, particularly among young men. You know, he had a hard time early on, and and uh, he's adopted avoidance as a coping style. And that's that's really the, the, the coping style that I hate to see. Because, you know, it's, it's out of fear. He doesn't want to fail. He doesn't want to look stupid. He doesn't want to embarrass himself. Uh, and, and, you know, he's, as you say, a wonderful human being and very loved, but he's hiding from the world. So how do you bring someone out of hiding? How do you, how do you uh, coax someone uh, or persuade someone that it's worth taking a shot? And this is where uh, creativity comes into play. You know, even bribery, you know, but uh, um, if you can find something to interest him in, uh, something to uh, uh, get him to stick his head out of his hole um, long enough to, you know, to smell life and get excited by something, anything. Uh, could be a, a project, could be a, a relationship, could be a sport, could be a puzzle, could, could be... Um, uh, Something online, some chat room, some group of people, some game, uh, anything to get him involved in life. You know, that, that's, I always say, to the, the measure of a successful life is, is have you found a game you love to play? Have you found something you love to play? And, and uh, whether it's a business or a profession, you know, once you get in the game, and love the game, then the wins and the losses don't matter. Uh, the victory is loving the game and looking forward to taking another shot. And right now, your son, bless his soul, is is dropped out of the game because uh, he's afraid of embarrassing himself. He's afraid that he doesn't have whatever it takes. Um, and And it's your job and the job of whoever you find to help you. And there are lots of people who can do it 
doesn't have to be a mental health professional, could be, uh, but it could be uh, an uncle, an aunt, a grandparent, a friend, a relative, a music teacher, uh, a, a gym teacher, a, uh, a drill instructor in the army if he decides to enlist. Um, you, you don't know who it's going to be, but that's the, that's the project. And, and approach it with a creative mind. Try not to fall into the trap of, of getting frustrated and, and fatalistic and just kind of giving up on him. Not that you'd ever do that, but uh, just feeling in your heart that it's never going to work out because chances are it will work out. Chances are if you keep at it, if you keep coming toward him with different offers of different projects, different treasures, different goodies, uh, one of these days he's going to get in a mood where he'll, he'll snatch, he'll, he'll, he'll reach out. He'll, uh, his eyes will widen and his heart will beat and he will, come out of hiding long enough to taste some kind of success, some kind of, uh, some kind of uh, approval of others, some kind of engagement on his own in a way that, that, it, that it's more valuable to chase that feeling than to hide and avoid feelings altogether. I promise you, if you keep at it, with a team of people, not you alone, with a team of people, and they can be a ragtag bunch of, don't have to be professionals or experts of any kind, just people who are interested in him, care about him, know something about something, uh, to get him hooked on life, to find a game he loves to play, and and then you're off to the races. Then, you know, then you've got it made. Then, he, then he's doing this thing we call life until he can't do it anymore. It's a, it's a, uh, you're in a, in a tough place right now, but a place that is fraught, fraught with possibility as long as you keep at it. Good luck and do me a favor, come back to us in a few months and tell me what's going on. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'd love to follow you along, Mary, in your journey with your son. Thanks so much for, for writing to us. Okay, this next one is about hormones in girls and ADHD. It starts, hello, Dr. Hallowell. I am a divorced parent of one daughter who is about to turn 13. She started middle school last year. She was diagnosed with ADHD several years ago due to struggling in the classroom. She had no issues with peers or coaches, though. After trials of a handful of medications that were either ineffective or had negative side effects, she responded well to guanfacine, and she has been taking it ever since. Guanfacine, that probably Sorry. is. Guanfacine, okay. However, her re reactivity, anger, and impatience at home only, mind you, are at an all-time high and have been for a year or two. As she enters adolescence and is experiencing hormonal changes, I am wondering whether that has an effect on how medications for ADHD work. Do you recommend a medication reevaluation? Of note, she presents much more like a boy with ADHD than how girls typically present. Thank you for any thoughts that you have, Chloe. Yeah, by all means, I recommend a reevaluation of medication. You know, guanfacine worked for a while. But um, it's not working so much um, at, at home because of her reactivity, anger, and impatience. Uh, and do hormones play a role? Yes, indeed, they do. They very much do. Um, so you, you, you want to revisit medications. And 80% uh, uh, of people with ADD can get a, an excellent response to medication. And by that, I mean target symptom improvement with no side effects, no, 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 no side effects other than appetite suppression without unwanted weight loss. But remember, there's more to this than just medication. There, we have many more tools in the toolbox than just medication. Uh, you might want to uh, consider one of my favorites. It's a, a real breakthrough, the Zing method. We've, we've had, we've had uh, podcasts about this in the past. It's, it's a specialized form of exercise that you do for 10 minutes twice a day that bolsters the cerebellum, a part of your brain at the back. It turns out the cerebellum is very involved in executive function and, and mood and cognitive issues. If you do these for 10 minutes twice a day, three to six months, 85% uh, of people get really excellent results. 
Uh, to learn more, just go to a website, distraction.zingperformance. That's Z-I-N-G performance.com. That's distraction.zingperformance.com. It doesn't, you don't use medication at all. You may take medication while you're doing zing. That's not contraindicated, but uh, this is a completely non-medication treatment for ADHD, uh, and it's based on breakthrough science from Jeremy Schmaman at Mass General Hospital, Harvard Medical School. Schmaman's not part of the Zing group at all, but the Zing people uh, took it, took advantage of, of Schmaman's research in developing their program, which I think is very, very promising. So I recommend that, and then and then the other, uh, you know standards of non-medication treatment, physical exercise of all kinds. My friend John Rady in his book Spark showed what an incredibly powerful tool exercise is for sharpening up your mental faculties, uh, getting enough sleep, meditating, eating right, in other words, avoiding junk food, avoiding uh, sugar, um, trying to eat whole foods and, and not use uh, uh, drugs and alcohol to, to help you get by. Uh, and then coaching is another standard in, in helping with ADD. You're talking about good news in that she's symptomatic only at home, which means she can hold it together away from home, which is, which is a good sign. But we want to help her at home as well. You know, she's got her race car brain is running away with her and she's having trouble putting on the brakes. That's ADD, race car brain with bicycle brakes. And uh, you want to strengthen those breaks in whatever ways you can. So I would suggest revisit medication, see if stimulants might work this time. But in the meanwhile, uh, investigate the Zing program. Uh, go to distraction.zingperformance.com. And then look at physical exercise, meditation, sleep, eating right, um, and coaching. And also, don't forget my favorite uh, element in the list, which is positive human connection. The other vitamin C, as I call it. A lot of people aren't getting enough vitamin C these days because of the pandemic, but we need to connect with each other one way or another. So so make sure uh, your daughter is doing that as well. Thank you so much for writing in, and please give us follow-up. Love to hear how, how she's making out. In this anxious back-to-school time, everyone is looking for ways to reduce the edge of anxiety. And one good way to try is by taking Omega Bright Supplement, Omega CBD, Omega Bright CBD, as well as the Omega Bright Fish Oil product. Both are good for emotional reactivity and can uh, take the edge off of that. They're fully natural, very healthy uh, really developed uh, by a top, top-notch top company, omegabrightwellness.com. And you can get 20% off your first order by using the code PODCAST2020. Enter that, get 20% off, omegabrightwellness.com. Okay, now let's get back to the show. Okay, uh, since we're on the subject of medication, we have another question from a listener about medication. Jean wrote, thank you. Please talk more about Ritalin and other best medications for ADD. I have side effects and it takes months to get my medication changed. So I was thinking maybe you could just give listeners a quick overview. Is that what you were thinking, Sarah? You know, it's my job to produce, so this is me producing you. <laughs> well, I will do as I'm told. I, in fact, I would love to do your bidding and this this uh, this writer, this listener's uh, bidding. Excellent. Uh, it, it, you know, it says it takes months to get my medication changed. That should not happen. Uh, these medications, stimulant medications, can be changed uh, daily if if need be. Uh, it certainly shouldn't take months. There's something wrong with that uh, with that picture. So uh, uh, maybe have a sit down with your doctor or nurse practitioner or whoever you're working with, and try to uh, set up a system where you can make changes uh, more quickly. Because to wait months for a stimulant medication change is is just it's insane. There's no need for that. Now. The, the stimulant medications, of which Ritalin is one, are basically divided into two categories. Those that are methylphenidate-based, Ritalin, Focalin, 
Detrano Patch, Concerta, Riddle in L.A. Um, those are all based on the molecule methylphenidate, which came into use in the early 1950s. And, and Ritalin is the, is the best known among those. By the way, do you know where Ritalin got its name? It, the man who developed it uh, developed it to help his wife with her tennis game and so she could focus better. And uh, her name was Rita. Hence, Rita line is, is what it was, where the name came from. And then the other group of stimulants are based on the molecule amphetamine. Uh, now, amphetamine was used for the first time to treat what we now call ADHD in, guess what year? 1937. Most people think it's some new development in the, in the past couple of decades. Not so at all. It's been around for, what is that, like 80 years. And, um, uh, and, and that's good because nothing lasts that long unless it is safe and effective. Uh, now, method, the, the best-known amphetamine-based medications are Adderall, Adderall XR stands for extended release, Vivance, which is a, another extended release, and Medeus, which is the longest acting of the amphetamine-based uh, medications. So those two groups, the methylphenidate-based and the amphetamine-based, make, um, make up the bulk of uh, stimulant medication that we prescribe for ADHD, and they still remain, in my opinion, the gold standard. Those are the best when they work. They're the best. Um, and, um, uh, you know, the, they're not definitive treatment, but they are symptomatic treatment. They're like eyeglasses. And eyeglasses are pretty darn good if you're nearsighted, and stimulant medication is pretty darn good if you have trouble focusing, if you have, have ADHD. The major side effect of, of both groups, the side effects are the same, major side effect is it cuts your appetite. So you have to be careful not to lose weight that you don't want to lose. Uh, other side effects are much less common, but they include insomnia if you take it too close to bedtime, elevated heart rate, elevated blood pressure. Uh, some people get jittery as if they've had too much coffee. Some people, the opposite, oddly enough, become somnolent. Uh, some people just don't like the way it makes them feel. They feel like they, you, they lose a bit of their personality. They lose their spontaneity, their sense of humor. Anything, any of those that happen, you just stop the medication and you can stop it on a dime. You don't have to taper it. Uh, so if it does anything you don't like, if you turn purple, stop it and you'll go back to your original color. Um, you know, so the, one of the great conveniences of these medications is that they're in and out of your system in a matter of hours. And that's why I say you certainly don't have to wait months to, to make a change. And if one doesn't work, another might. You know, if, if Ritalin doesn't work, Adderall might. Uh, the fact that one medication doesn't help you doesn't mean that the other grouping won't. Which is the, how do you know in advance which one to try? It's trial and error. And that's where we are. You try one, you try the other. And as I said, you can, you can go through a number of these in, in, a, in a matter of days. So you, you, don't have to, you don't have to spend months doing the trial and error. About 80% of people who have ADD will find a benefit without side effects from one or another of the medications. And then there are the non-stimulant medications, which uh, don't have the stellar track record of stimulants, but they're great if they work. And at the top of the list in, in that group, in, in my opinion, is, is Wellbutrin, Bupropion, which also has effectiveness as an antidepressant and as an anti-addiction medication. It's marketed as Zyban to help people quit smoking. So there's a quick, quick overview uh, about uh, stimulant medication and, and medication in general. Uh, work with a doctor who knows what he or she is doing. That's the key to it all. Uh, work with a doctor who has lots of experience in treating, uh, in treating adults and children who have ADHD. And if you do, you, you, can, you can really exhaust the possibilities, uh, certainly in a matter of a couple of months at, at most, uh, and you may be one of those people like me for whom medication does not work. My medication is caffeine, coffee. That's the world's medication. And, uh, but I don't leave home without it. It's, uh, it's something that I, I find very beneficial. Well, thank you so much for uh, writing in and asking about that. Sarah, do we have another question? We sure do. Do you remember the mini episode you did a few weeks ago, it was a little bit more than a few weeks ago, where you asked listeners whether you should stick to only talking about ADHD? Oh, uh, yes, 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 yes. Whether I should stick. Yes, yes. 
So um, I had, we had said in a recent episode that we got a lot of listener feedback where they all said, no, you should talk about whatever you want. Um, I wanted to let you know that that has continued and we are still getting emails where people are telling you, you know, yeah, speak your mind. And well, so- you know, it's funny because I thought about the, whoever wrote that um, to me telling me to, you know, shut up and dribble. And and uh, he was or she was trying to help me, and I appreciate that. And um, he or she was saying, you know, you're 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 going to hurt yourself if you go outside your behavioral perimeter, if you go outside your uh, designated area of expertise. And 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 I I took it to heart enough that I wanted to ask people about it. And yeah. and I also am grateful to the man or woman who sent me that because they were trying to help me. And and maybe he or she is right. Maybe there are people when I go off to other topics who think, oh, shut up and dribble, you know, and... and uh, well, they're not emailing us if that's the case. Good, good, <laughs> good, good, good. But I wanted to share one with you. It's a little bit long, but I thought it was particularly powerful. So I wanted to read it to you. It says, hi, Dr. H. I was catching up with the podcast when I heard the episode where a listener suggested that you should stick to what you know and leave more provocative topics alone. I've never sent an email to your show before, but I absolutely had to this time. I'm a black woman with ADHD, and I also have two sons with ADHD, and I've appreciated your work for many years now. I've often felt invisible as a woman of color with ADHD. Although there are plenty of us out here, we often get overlooked for one reason or another. I've been absolutely floored and thrilled to witness more conversation happening about race in this country, and I've been especially happy to witness it coming from specifically from some of my favorite ADHD experts. I'm beginning to feel seen in a way I never have have before. We are living in unprecedented times where the people at the very top are willfully and intentionally corrupt, bigoted, illogical, and hateful, and it is costing lives every single day. Now is not the time for anyone to be silent or to simply stick to polite topics that won't ruffle feathers. I want to know what kind of people the experts I'm supporting in parentheses with my time when I'm listening to their podcasts and my money when I buy their books and go to conferences. I want to know who they are, and I don't think you can call yourself a decent person and not speak about the things that are happening in our country. The same way more ADHD experts are talking about how race affects diagnosis and treatment, I hope to hear more speaking out on how poverty and lack of access to mental health resources also affects diagnosis and treatment. It's especially vital that people with a platform use their reach for good, which is exactly what I've witnessed you doing for years now. The person who sent you that email does not speak for me, and I suspect they don't speak for a significant portion of your listeners. Please keep speaking about the things that matter, especially when they're messy and have potential to ruffle feathers. Respectfully, Candy. Oh, Candy, what a wonderful email. I can't thank you enough for your encouragement and and also for what what you're seeing happen in, in your own life. I mean, you're you're twice invisible. You're a woman with ADHD, the biggest underdiagnosed group, and you're of color with ADHD, also an overlooked group. So you you have a uh, uh, two forces that lead you to, you know, to fade into the background. And I'm so glad you're standing out and standing forth and standing up and saying, hey, here I am, uh, finding your voice, finding your identity, laying claim to your truth, your story, your place in this world, your place at the table. And uh, gosh, it's wonderful because, you know, I mean, this is uh, you know, I've been trying to bring people with ADHD to the forefront for my whole career, and I'm, I'm now 70 years old, and it's wonderful to see it happening in the two groups you represent, women and uh, uh, color, you know, and, and uh, both groups are hugely overlooked in our society in general, but in, in the ADHD diagnosis in particular. And, um, you know, it's uh, people of color who have ADHD, women of color who have ADHD are so at risk not to fulfill their destiny, not to fulfill their potential, not to find the encouragement, the guts, the the platform, the whatever, the propulsion to stand up and be counted and then help others stand up because that's the next step, which you're doing and writing in and and helping others stand up. I mean, you know, because this is, this diagnosis, unlike so many diagnoses in medicine, 
this is good news. Things can only get better when you find, find out you have ADHD. They can only get better. And often your life changes dramatically for the better. You're, 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 you're really uh, uh, on, the, on the precipice of making good on all your potential. You're on the precipice of finding the superpower hidden within ADHD. Don't get me wrong, it can be a terrible curse as well, and that's why it's so important to diagnose it, because undiagnosed, ADHD can, can all but ruin your life, and sometimes indeed ruin your life, whether it's through uh, incarceration or addiction or uh, job loss, uh, what have you. But when you learn to get the right help, uh, you can begin to tap into the superpower that's so often there. The Ferrari engine, when it gets its brakes, can start winning races. And that's what you're doing. And uh, no pun on race, you know, because you, you've, uh, you've also got that going. And, and people of color are, are finally uh, being recognized more accurately. And, and we, uh, old white men like me, uh, are understanding better what it's like to uh, go every day. And, and if you see a police officer, wonder, is he going to pull you over? And if he does, what are you going to do? And, you know, I had, I really, in all my naivete, and I grew up in the 60s when we were fighting for civil rights, but um, in all my naivete, I, I sort of thought that, that had been taken care of. And then, my gosh, in the past, uh, even just the past months, uh, learning how wrong I was, that it's anything but taken care of, and that we Old white men like me need to uh, start learning uh, that um, we haven't solved this problem and it, to the point where many of us, including me, are were unaware of the details of what it's like subjectively to live as a person of color uh, in this country. And then if you throw in poverty, which which is another way of being unnoticed, invisible, uh, discounted, rejected, unheard. Uh, th then you have a third factor folded into the into the into the mess, as you say, the the messiness of life. And and so if you're if you're uh, if you're a person who has little money, you're of color, and you have ADHD, and you don't know it. Boy, oh boy, uh, is the deck stacked against you. But if you start listening to people like you, Candy, if, and if you hear your, your stirring example, and if you say, okay, let me go find someone to get my ADHD taken care of. Now, that in and of itself is a problem. How do you gain access? How do you gain access to care? Uh, experts in ADHD are not easy to find, you know, for one reason or another. They're as rare as hen's teeth. You know, I live in the Boston area, so there are plenty of experts around here but if you go outside of the academic centers, they're, they're hard to find. And, and um, uh, particularly ones who take my approach, which is a strength-based approach, saying, you know, this is a trait, not a disorder. It can be a terrible disorder, but it can also become a superpower if you manage it right. We're very hard to find. The most economical way of gaining access to me is by one of my books, which are cheap on Amazon. That's like $10 for, for delivered from distraction. And now, for some people, ten dollars is is not cheap. It's a it's a big reach. So there are also libraries. There are places where you can read books uh, for, for no charge, and and the, the this podcast is free of charge as, as well. And my web website has a lot of information on it, drhallowell.com, That's also free of charge. And and it is the truth that shall set you free. In this case, it it really is. Once you understand. The basic uh, symptoms, which uh, creativity, originality, entrepreneurialism, powerful brain, going all the time, uh, desire to be free, desire to, you know, not uh, necessarily play by the rules, but uh, make it up as you go. All of those positives that you can't buy and you can't teach in immense curiosity, coupled with the negatives, which is trouble getting organized, trouble being on time, trouble... Uh, 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 showing up where and when you're supposed to, trouble following through, um, and trouble focusing when you're not interested. When you're interested, you can hyper-focus, but when you're not interested, your mind wanders, goes elsewhere. And all what that all sums up to is uh, trouble achieving and, and a tendency to underachieve and then get fired, lose jobs, lose relationships, and so on and so forth. But if you, if you can identify that, if you, if you can see yourself in that list of symptoms, 
and then go go to an MD uh, who who has some experience with this, and you don't have to go to an expensive specialist. Uh, go to some MD, and and uh, you know you could bring my book with you. You could say I've gone through this; these are the symptoms I've got. Uh, could you give me a trial of stimulant medication? And um, you know, as long as they're comfortable with it and have, have uh, comfortable with the diagnosis, they'll do that. And that's sort of the first step getting a trial of medication and, and then uh, learning about the condition, learning about what it is, owning it, metabolizing it, uh, learning about it well enough that you can teach someone else about it. Uh, this is life changing. And then, and then, you know, chances are once you, once you do get it, your earning power will increase because you'll be, you'll be able to marshal your, your God given talents and resources and start leading others uh, uh, of your, group of your race of your ethnic grouping what whoever you are lead lead and help them free i say break the break the manacles that that can can be holding you back and and when you start leading others to do that helping others to do that it's a great feeling you know saint francis said in giving we receive and it is so true when you can help someone else and when you can see them change their life change, and when they say, "Gosh, thank you, man, that feels good and and you have it in your power to do that, candy. You have it in your power to lead a whole bunch of people because you're representative of of a group uh, that uh, is underserved for sure. people of color, women of color who have a d d thank you so much for writing in and and um uh, you know i'm I'm glad you're encouraging me to uh, to speak my mind, you know, I I, I am uh, someone who you know values uh, uh, telling the truth, and um, and I certainly am doing that with my work with ADHD. And I I hope I hope and pray whoever leads this country in the coming years, uh, what we need is is coming together. What we need is forces of, of unification. And and often that's done best at local levels. So I, I, li- I like to think that, you know, that w- everyone knows how much we need each other now. Everyone knows that what we need to do is come together. And, and so I, I kind of believe that we'll find a way to make that happen. Candy, thank you so much for, for writing in. I, I can't thank you enough. Well, that's going to do it for today. If you have a question you'd like me to address in a future episode, just like the ones I answered today, please write an email or record a voice memo and send it to us at connect at distractionpodcast.com. That's the word connect at distractionpodcast.com. We love getting these questions. We really love them and, and make them... You know, commentary, not just question. Put in your opinions, your thoughts, your speculations. It's, it's a great way for our audience to get to know each other. I'm Dr. Ned Hallowell. Thank you so much for joining me. Distraction is created by Soundscrape Media. Our recording engineer and editor is the meticulously brilliant Scott Person. Never misses a sound. And our producer is the very imaginative, but also very careful to detail, Sarah Curtin. The episode you just heard was sponsored by Omega Bright CBD. Formulated by Omega Bright Wellness, creators of the number one omega-3 supplements for the past 20 years. Omega Bright CBD. Safe, third-party tested, and it works. Shop online at omegabrightwellness.com.